Hi, Rob Bryanton here. Lately I've been thinking uh, a lot again about retro causality. Uh, you know, my most popular video right now, uh, imagining the fourth dimension, had uh, I guess a little bit of a faux pas in it when I quoted Michio Kaku from his book Physics of the Impossible, where he said uh, that uh, antiparticles are recognized as particles moving backwards in time. Uh, a lot of people disagreed with that interpretation, although it is something that Feynman put forth and uh, is uh, certainly something that's represented in the Feynman diagrams that I was showing on screen at the same time in the, the video. But uh, retro causality is certainly, uh, you know, not not just spooky stuff. It is, uh, even though we've been talking about a spooky clock here, retro causality is part of the mainstream quantum physics thinking. So if you're going to be able to think about timelessness par, uh, as the way that the present and past and future are all simultaneous, then there's no reason that you can't have a, some kind of a causal chain that moves in reverse time, and that's what retrocausality is. So if you can think about uh, how right now, if there's a, a Everett's multiverse that's out there, uh, of all the different ways that uh, you're going to die right now, and some of those are ways that your ancestors have also died, then uh, is there a way that uh, the genes that uh, are warning you not to do certain behaviors are really communicating across the same timelessness, uh, which uh, Richard Dawkins in, a, I think, a very enlightened moment called the River Out of Eden. And uh, I've been talking about that River Out of Eden uh, a little bit in other videos lately too. Uh, so if timelessness is what we're talking about, then uh, that means that uh, all the different ways that uh, uh, we could be thinking about that are dangerous for a certain species to die, uh, that's going to be connecting in the future as well. As long as that is the way that, uh, you know, a certain number of us are going to die, then there should be whatever genetic pressure is happening to uh, cause us to uh, have that uh, behavior removed and, uh, you know, an, an instinctual behavior that tells uh, an animal or a human being not to do a certain thing it can be thought of in this river out of Eden, this timeless way of viewing things that Gavin Gorban was also uh, so great at communicating. Uh, if you go to his site everythingforever.com you'll see what I'm talking about. So with a supernatural spooky clock then, uh, a couple of people have suggested to me that this clock is actually being started by a future version of me that's coming back and using retro causality to uh, to cause this t clock to turn on at certain times and uh, you know that for me that gets back into the one where people say uh, you never blink in your videos and I say that's because I only blink when you do uh, that's one of my favorite uh, YouTube jokes so uh, with retro causality then imagine if you could go back and also know how you personally are going to die and be able to warn the other versions of you in Everett's multiverse not to exhibit a certain behavior. That's not to say that those behaviors go away, it just means that there might be a way for you to be able to warn yourself uh, as a, you know, a voice of the ancestors or, uh, or the, you know, your subconscious or, or uh, you know, a hallucination, a voice that actually says, stop, don't do that. Uh, you know, all of those are possibilities within a universe that also includes retro causality. So uh, back in 2006 I had something happen to me that uh, at the time I was not willing to say was a supernatural event, but uh, maybe that's what uh, was really happening back then. So that's what I'm going to talk about in my next video.